Hey guys, Darius again. Um, I just want to start off the video with that this is going to be an extremely long video. So if you don't want to get into it, that's fine. Um, there's not going to be any editing, so you guys can kind of see the thought processes that happens throughout this. And after skimming through this, I felt like the first game was a stump, and the second game was like a kind of a slow death. So we're going to kind of go over the points for that. And it's going to be a really, really, really long video. So if you're not down for that, uh, feel free to close it now. And if you are, then, you know, enjoy the ride. I'll make it as simple and, you know, quick as possible while trying to hit all the other points. Since in the last video for analyzing the games, it was kind of like, I guess you could say it was kind of careless in a way where I did look over the whole, like, VOD, and I did, like, watch the whole thing, like, twice, but the way I explained it was in a very edited way, and it kind of beat around the brush for some things, and I think a lot of people got the wrong impression of what I was trying to do. So I got a lot of really hard feedback for that, and now with this VOD, I want to show you guys why I understand way more <laughs> than some of you guys do when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I'm going to go over every single point, and it's going to take a long-ass time, and you're either going to like it, hate it, or probably criticize me again, but I'm going to do this for all the guys that want to see everything. So we're going to go through picks and bands. We're going to go ahead, maximize this. So I'm not going to watch through the whole thing with you guys, but I'm just going to kind of go through each bit by bit. So we can kind of see that OG band cast first, band Callista next, and then the band Riven. I, I don't know why they band Riven. I think these bands are really insignificant. I think the biggest band that matters is probably the Callista Lulu. And the reasoning for that is because Callista was really strong on the last, or on this patch, and Lulu is really strong. And Lulu's still strong in the next patch. Tom Kench, a big, very hit in OP, like I said in the last video. Gangplank, very, very strong champion for Last Worlds and was constantly banned a lot. I don't know the percentage, but it's there. Elise, really high priority jungler next to Rek'Sai and Gragas for this patch. It's been a while, so if I say anything wrong, then you'll have to excuse me until I relearn it again while watching this video with you guys and reviewing it. So we're going to move on here, wait for what they pick, Alistar, Kindred. So Kindred, uh, this patch after Worlds, Kindred was a very top tier pick. I don't know why, she's just really strong in solo queue, so that's why she's valued a lot here. Alistar, he's the kind of pick that even if you don't play to win lane, he just does so much in team fights. So the main reason why people pick Alistar like I've said before in streams, is when people time flashes and you're in an immobile carry, if your flash is down, that's when the kills happen. Every single best team in the world, they always play off of flashes and cooldowns. Um, so every time someone's flash is down, Alistar can flank, Alistar can go for this target. Depends on what kind of comp you have. That's why Kindred's strong, that's why Lulu's strong, and that's why Nivea has been playing being played a lot more in this patch because when flashes are down you just go for it and if you just play ball comp to prevent dying for that then that's just another way of playing and origin was the kind of team that played that way so now with expecting backing them and, and now power of evil in the front lines they now have a lot of like a huge amount of insight they have a mechanical player power of evil and ex Pegging, like looking from the back lines and just like having a huge amount of insight for all of this because they've all played together and you know there's all that so I'm gonna move on to the next two picks Tristana Brahm Tristana is good against a lot of champions <laughs> that's a pretty general thing to say she's just a solid pick and I don't understand the reasoning fully and Brahm's a solid pick Brahm was also a, one of the top three other than Thresh Braum was one of the top three supports for Worlds, and after Worlds, he seems to still be there because of his CC, his level 1 priority, his ability to block a shit ton of shit in lane, and his ultimate, so that's another general thing to say. Um, next thing, Orianna. 
So this means that we're last picking top. Uh, t well, not we. But TSM is last picking top and is counter picking against Origin. So that means uh, Soaz needs to blind pick his top lane. And meanwhile, uh, Double Lift gets the counter pick on Trist. And uh, Mithy gets a counter pick on Alistar, which is what they were going for here because uh, support counter picks are big, but at the same time, they pick, TSM picked Alistar because of his huge priority in team fights, his ability to do other things, and just like, like is, there's a lot of different reasoning for the big teams at Worlds that just picked Alistar because he's just, he has CC, he tanks a lot, and he cap, most mainly of all capitalizes on flashes. And Ori synergizes well with that. And Alistar makes up for the tank spot that they don't really have. So if they don't have another tank, there's that. So I'm going to see what they pick next. O OG picks. Rumble Cassio. So this is a big, big red flag for their basically team fight. Braum team fight. Cassio team fight. Rumble team fight. These three are the core of their team fight comp. So, um,. What happens in team fights is basically they want to get all this AOE down on their backline because now now we're going to talk about flashes from OG's point of view, not just Alistar's. So, Bjergsen has an immobile uh, AP carry. By the way, this is my first time watching this on VOD. I only watched a little bit, so um, some of the things I say here will not be realized until later on. It won't be like the last VOD where I kind of watched it and I kind of just said things like... I don't know, irresponsibly, I guess. So, Rumble ult, if Ori doesn't have flash, boom. Or Rumble ult on Ori. Um, Cassio ult, Ori has no flash, all that. Braum on Ori. Trist is just a person who can survive, and Elise is a person who can keep them in the early game while setting up. Now, they have three APs and one AD, which means it's really important for Niels to to not fall behind because these are only 80 damage source. This heavily, this comp is heavily around Neos basically and around their, their strong team fighting and ability to play as a team. And, you know, Braum and Elise, you know, molds the comp together and these, they just kind of like mold to each other. And what I mean by that is they play to each other's strengths and weaknesses. And while Triss doesn't have the greatest, you know, early game, she has a strong mid to late game. Braum keeps like keeps stuff up is a front line is their only front line and the rest of them they kind of just have cc's to throw out to support that front line and so does braun so they don't have like super hard engage but they don't need it because they can just since oriana doesn't have like um, mobility which is really important in this meta and neither does casio like they just they can just like pour everything on beard and pour everything on Jinx because they don't have mobility. And these champs are really strong against that. So what Hanser needs to think about is, I don't know what his champion pool is, but so let's let's think about this. If you were Hanser and you were to pick into Rumble, with they knowing they had Cassio in mind, what would you pick? So there's multiple options. If you pick Olaf, Olaf is extremely strong against Rumble in lane and can own Olaf, I mean, own Rumble really badly. This was the most common conclusion drawn up by, I, I think Saint said it once. It was drawn up by a lot of people and, you know, to the, <laughs> the a lot of the scene in general. Um, I think Olaf would be actually really good here because Olaf is good against Elise, it's good against Braum, good against Cassio, and good against Rumble. Now, there's an alternative to Olaf, which is Renekton, which is what I remember what he picked. So let's move on and see what he picked. Okay, he picked Renekton. And that alternative means that they need to gank the shit out top. And this is already kind of bad, in my opinion, because they have to focus so hard on top, which leaves uh, these two lanes to kind of fend for themselves if you don't focus top. And, and if you don't focus top, Haunter needs to outplay Rumble and Elise, like, knowing that he doesn't have the jungle pressure half the time. So that's really, really important. And I don't know how 
like Kindred doesn't have CC to follow up on Rumble, and Rumble's a kind of champion. Rumble Renekton matchup since the history, of the beginning of time, season three, is Rumble outscales Renekton, and Renekton beats Rumble early, but if Rumble survives early with like Cloth 5, just like in Season 3, Rumble Wild Scale. That's something I did against Impact in the past, but, you know, they had Lee Sin. They had Lee Sin, and this is Kindred. Lee Sin and Rek'Sai are much higher priority than Kindred, so this is not playing to the Renekton power spike or whatever, and <laughs> that's exactly what Amazing would say <laughs> if he was explained something he'd be like or whatever <laughs> Amazing such a great guy anyways moving on um, Olaf would have been a really good pick here just in general now the bad thing about Olaf is if he does fall behind on Olaf then he just gets melted by the rest of their team anyway so Renekton Olaf, they both get melted by the team, but Olaf opens up more early game options because Olaf's able to 2 versus one basically with jungle with Kindred supporting behind him and Olaf's able to abuse much harder than Renekton, in my opinion, because because uh, Rumble can just get away with cloth armor since Olaf's a chase down champion. Um, he can't get away with cloth armor if you play Olaf. But Renekton, it's still a fine choice. It's just there probably is better choices now. Um, let's think about the other choices Haunter had. So he, he played he played uh, Renekton and he played. Uh, he'd played Renekton in the earlier matches. He probably plays Darius. He probably plays Fiora. Um, Fiora is a bad pick into Rumble, believe it or not. I learned this by playing good CJ Entis's Shy. Um, when he was playing Fiora, and we were playing scrims, and they were gonna play against the, uh, um, I forgot who they lost. He was like Janair or someone. When I played against Shy. I learned that Rumble was a really good pick against Fiora because Fiora gets kited and Fiora loses really bad early to Rumble. So that's why uh, Fiora wasn't picked here because I know Fiora was strong this patch and we saw a Flame pick Fiora. And so that's the reason for that. Um, so we can't pick Fiora. And there's Darius who is really good against Rumble, but it's it's like another alternative to Olaf and Renekton, Darius. Darius is really strong too. But the thing is, Darius sucks against Trist. Darius sucks against Braum. Darius sucks against Cassio and Elise. He just gets CC'd and died. So uh, Olaf is definitely the best choice if you're going to early game snowball. But other than that, I think he should have picked something to maybe outscale. Now, Aurelia would kind of be good, but it, he would kind of, Aurelia would kind of suck here actually because. You just kite it. If you fall behind, you die. Like I, I don't. I have no idea what Haunter could pick here, besides Olaf and Renekton. I, I really, really don't. I can't think of anything. So if we had to review his champion pool, I'm sure he would be able to give you more insight. And then that's where we stop overanalyzing it from here. Um, I'm talking about that the most because that's what I understand the most about. As for jungle matchup, Elise is strong earlier, but Kindred is shown to be really strong. Cassio, Cassio's going to have priority in the lane against Ori. He has Ignite. Um, Ori's going to outscale, um, but depends on Elise ganks and Kindred pressure. Jinx and Tristana, very similar uh, late games. Tristana has more mobility, which allows her to get away from Alistar, get away from Ori, get away from Renekton. There is no threat on Tristana at all for this comp. And because that's just the way Tristana is, so they have to capitalize early and be really strong. So the way these comps work out is uh, they have similar late game scaling, but I feel that OG has more power overall in terms of a comp. It's very similar, but I feel like there could have been more efficient picks, and I don't know what that is yet, but that's just how I feel. So I feel like OG very very slightly won this draft but overall it's still going to be about you know who plays better like you know i i know og won these games but in like if tsm won then i don't know maybe i would say tsm slightly had the better draft so that uh <laughs> we're gonna move on from there all right Oh, what, freak? Okay, that's a ward. Um, so for level 1s, we see all these teams do pretty standard level 1s. They kind of just ward, play safe. I, I guess they don't want to 
Try too harder from scrim results. Invading's never been good. It's not like Samsung White from last year. It's a little bit more chill than last year, as you can see. We can see that Soaz and Amazing are going to double jungle here in TP top. Nope, they're going to double jungle and walk bottom. And Hauntzer will double jungle with Kindred and, eat, and probably go top or double jungle towards top. While Soaz could also double jungle towards top or go bottom. So we're going to see what happens here. They, now that they did the camps, Soaz is walking into the enemy jungle and looking for the over overround gank on Beerg. So this is a thing that a lot of teams did in the scrims as well. And that's pressure mid. That's also a Chinese uh, LPL tactic. And what it does is it puts a lot of pressure on mid and Beerg against Cassio. Like he's going to need all the pressure he needs. So, um. It looks like TSM got out level one here because TSM started on their dub double side and ended up on the lower side. And Braum is a lot stronger level one, although TSM did get a really sh nice combo here. Let's see what happens. I think Hauntzer just W'd the wizard buff. Let's see that again. Because that could have been a kill okay that was a misclick so that's honestly not a that's that's a pretty huge mistake but it's an understandable mistake because they're all standing on top of red buff and when you're clicking and it's on stage level one it's very hectic but there, there's no excuse that's still a that's still a pretty big mistake and as we can see, we can see Brahms level one power showing here because he lived all that and he's going to get stuns here and the game's over. So let's see what, so now the Renekton pick doesn't even matter. Let's see if Olaf pick would have actually mattered here. They Hauntzer would be healthier from double jungling. Hauntzer would do combo on Mithy and he would have the the true damage so he'd be a little bit lower. Hauntzer would have Ghost or Flash and just slow all of them with Olaf and Mithy would be lower than what he is right now. Mithy would probably either barely live or barely die and then um, the rest of them would be able to walk away so now I kinda understand why this game was such a stomp and the reasoning for why this was such a stomp is not only because of the Redact and Olaf pick it didn't matter what he picked because after a level one like this you're pretty fucked I think Olaf would have influenced this level one a lot but th this is this is where we're gonna not go into the whole game now this is this is where we're gonna explain to you what TSM did wrong so um, Level 1s, like, they did spread out, but there's a lot of risks to take. And when you start on your double, your AD side, and you walk into the other side, if for some reason OG starts with their AD and support on top side, and you don't, like, and they start on your side, basically, wherever your, let's make it simple, wherever your AD is, you either need to stop, start on the top, the weak side, let's go back to level 1, this is really important for you guys to understand. This might apply to the new patch too, but slightly less. So wherever your A look, okay, let's look at from OG side. Wherever your A D and support is, you want to start on the opposite side. And jungle towards them. Because they're the ones that are gonna give you power. Brahm's gonna give you power. Um if they start on this side, Alistar's gonna give you power and roaming, like regardless of what like who's stronger level one having your support there is the power of numbers first and then team comp level one after so this is a very very greedy start by tsm in the past i would think about this a lot and i would i would actually uh when we got fucked level one by clg by doing stuff like this i i was super upset and that's when i had to talk to um, the team and local and everyone about level one and 
it was really important that we all understood level one. And this is one of the basic things they probably forgot. I don't know if it's because I was there or not. Like, I, I, I don't know if, if I'm a top laner and I'm in a two versus one meta where I get fucked all the time, I want to at least have a level one where I don't get fucked again. And right here, this is like, this is a very um, preservative start. By taking risk and starting the opposite side and having wards out, I don't know what they did with the wards, will allow you to jungle towards your bot lane. Now, the other option is, this is what they were probably going for. Let me, let me try to understand with their point of view. So they were probably going for, they're jungling towards top side, and then they were going to try and catch top. So that, that's what they're probably going to do. But they ended up sending Alistar to walk over here. So Al Alistar walked down here and then walked all the way and then like just didn't do anything bottom. While Braum gave back to the team by just ganking mid and then pressuring their top jungle. Now that isn't Kasing's fault at all. It's all about level 1 strategy. Like you can say whatever you want about the players but all this is the strategy they made together as a team. Or with the coaches or analysts. Now, this is their first tournament together. So we're not going to go too much into that. But I'm going to tell you guys the factor of that is heavily off of players planning, coaches and analysts planning, and then player mentality, and then player champ pool. So all of these factored into this this level one and we're just gonna we're probably gonna honestly stop here because this is this is honestly like there's nothing really more they can do. Origin such a like a strong mechanical team and a very solid team that did did pretty well at Worlds and had the potential to win it. So they're not gonna throw this game at all, especially with power of evil mechanics on middle and X Pecky being the minds backing them up. So we're just outclassed right here in terms of uh, overall player experience, and it's understandable. So um, you know. They, they're going to win. They're going to win. Because I, I, well, we already know the result. But now I really understand why it snowballed as it is. Like, let's see if there's anything that else that happened. Because there's really nothing more to say. Because basically, Beer got pressured middle by the Braum and by the Braum and Rumble level 2. And there's really not much Beer can do, honestly. This is like the old TSM where we didn't give Beer enough and we didn't give back we didn't set up our top laner enough like you just both of our souls get fucked in some kind of way there's honestly Hauntzer nothing there's nothing Hauntzer could have done mechanically here other than be Olaf or or you know contribute to level one strategy and figure out what like what he's going to be doing for the level one um that's something I really tried to do because when I got fucked level one the reason why I had the same problem with double, as double if when I got really mad at the team is because, you know, we didn't have that set up. So that I'll, with that comes experience, infrastructure, and players planning. So it's not just one person's fault. It's the whole, like, everyone as a team has learning experience. So now I understand that. Um, we're just going to move on to the next game. And... In this game, let's see, let's go pick some bands. If you have any questions about the first game, I know I didn't even look through the game, but after seeing that level one, <laughs> that's, that's, that's face. Yeah, after seeing that level one, I think you all would agree with me that the game's over from there. And if you don't, that's fine. That's your opinion. And you, you, you do what makes you happy. Like, fuck off. Don't, don't criticize me. You fucking bronze players all right so anyways for for bands let's go back for the band so they banned Callista because he's strong in the patch jinx was double lifts one double of strongest champions maybe they didn't have anything else to ban um gangplank priority champion soaz is really good at gangplank um i can vouch for that i played against them in scrims before we found out we were matched against each other soaz is a very strong gangplank we dueled with each other once i I respect that he was very strong. Um, he also played Nar, 
So, yeah, we're not going to go over that too much. So, Cassid and ban. Maybe TSM was doing well with Cassid and in scrims. Maybe that's why they're banning it. Or maybe it's a throwaway ban. I don't know. Tom Kench ban. Really high priority. Um, really high priority support. <laughs> As I said earlier, hidden OP. Leeson. Um, I'm not sure why they banned Leeson this time. Maybe uh, Sven, Sven, we'll just call him Dennis. Maybe Dennis wanted to go to lead next. Maybe that's why they banned it. Maybe it's a throwaway ban because uh, Amazing doesn't is confident enough not to play Lee. And playing Lee on this kind of stage, it's, it's a little bit harder than scrims, obviously. So Lulu, first pick pri priority. Um, Lulu is a very high priority, but at the same time, Wait a second. They picked Kindred and Elise. All right, so maybe it's Kindred AD. Not sure. Not. Uh, well, I guess we'll find out. They're smiling about it. Um. So one of the reasons why OG is such a strong team is because they don't firmly believe in the meta as much. Like they know what the meta champions are, know they're strong, but they're very open about it. They get to play champs like Cassio, Anivia. You know, they're specialty champions, and that's one of the reasons why they're a strong team. They don't play purely to copycat the meta. They're their own entity and their own identity of players, and you can see that with how they play. Um, so Lulu is really strong, but the thing about Lulu is she's not invincible, so you have to really play around her. The, the Asian teams are extremely good at playing Lulu, which is why they're banned all the time, and... Uh, we were kind of just learning it, so it took a while for us to get used to it for top and mid. So now they're playing that. Um, Gragas. <laughs> so the options here was either Rek'Sai or Gragas. I think that Gragas is stronger later on. And I think Gragas is better on stage, but I feel like Rek'Sai is probably the better pick if you want priority. So Gragas is still a fine pick here. Um, Kindred does a lot against Gragas. I've experienced that in solo queue. It's a very painful experience when you get counter jungled by Kindred. Or, well, I actually, no, it's Elise. I, I don't know. You know. We're just gonna keep going. So Tristana. Uh, it seems that from both of these games, Tristana is the blind pick for AD. That is seems to be the meta. So now we will all understand that Trist is a blind pick here. Maybe it's Trist into Kindred, because Trist has long range. They probably haven't played against Trist AD before, or Kindred AD before, so maybe he just wanted to pick Trist because he, you know, Jinx is banned, and Trist is the next in priority. Um, Orianna pick. Orianna is a good mid-blind pick. So now, um, the reason why Ori is so good here is because if it's Lulu mid, Ori is very good against Lulu. That's the bad part about first picking Lulu is you give their enemy mid laner the ability to, or enemy to win at least one of the solo lanes. So no matter what, they're gonna each team's gonna win one of the solo lanes because you early picked uh, mid instead of getting the counter pick on one of the lanes. You lock yourself in, and that this was kind of a dilemma for TSM when we did this, and we decided that it was right, but we just could never get it down. So Ori is a very good pick here because Lulu's locked in. Ori's good against Lulu. And if Lulu doesn't go mid, Lulu goes top, and then they get the counter pick on Lulu top. So I'm going to see what happens here. So they they blind pick Rise. Now this could either mean Rise is mid, which Ori is still good against Rise mid because of his, his lower range, and it could be Rise top, which is... Uh, Depending on the player, this is where the top laner's ability is tested. You need to pick snowball champions and gank the shit out of that lane. This is my weakness as a player. And it was the ability to not be able to play against Ryze. <clears throat> I was terrible against Ryze. And if Quas picked Ryze in our playoff matches, we probably would have lost. This really tests the ability of the top laner to be able to gank top. And because I was really bad at, um, I knew when to gank for it, but I was a really passive aggressive player in that regard. So I told, I would tell my teams all the right information that they needed. And then if it didn't happen, I would get really mad.
now that's not the right thing to do i would have to really really like go over it with them and that's my fault as a player and a person so rise here this really tests top laners as players being able to abuse top laners because hanser if soaz doesn't abuse hanser then Hauntzer's just going to go on a rampage. That's how Rise is. Um, they pick Thresh here for, I guess, follow-up for the rest of their team. Maybe. I, I'm not sure. I, Thresh is just a strong pick in general, so I guess that's why they picked that. Um, they picked it into Alistar. Alistar, like, once again, Alistar is one of those picks you can just blind pick, as we saw from the game earlier. Um... This Saint just brought up a really good point right here. So Riven, she gets Hex Drinker, Hex Drinker against Lulu, Gragas, Rise. Nothing else to be said. Once he gets Hex Drinker, maybe Merc Treads, maybe in the Maw, she's going to be unstoppable if she gets Snowballing. If she doesn't get Snowballing, she'll still be strong, but not as strong because Riven's a really snowbally champion back and forth. So very heavy... Um, this is basically a double if Hauntzer comp where you need to keep Hauntzer alive early game and double if the main physical damage. While Origins comp is more evened out, you have two ADs and two APs, while they have TSM has three APs and one AD, which means that they're based on these two and Beerk's kind of the support, but he can still do a lot and Gragas is kind of supporting these two, so it's really up to Hauntzer and Doublelift and the, the team to support them to carry this while on OG side it's really up to Amazing to make sure Soaz gets the resources he needs to abuse Hauntzer. Needs to make sure that their bot lane's pretty independent so Amazing can just purely focus on mid and top. Um, there can be ganks bomb but because Thresh Trist is also pretty independent. They can gank for them. It's like, it's very hard to gank. So I, I predict that Amazing will gank top a lot because this is the kind of champion rise is just you gank him or you, you get abused and lose or you pray that your top player outplays him. It's very unrealistic scenarios. So we're going to go into that. So level one, very very tame level ones. Let's see if TSM learned from last game. We see that we see now that Rise is starting on the opposite side, just like uh, OG did last game. Now they have learned that if they start on this side, okay. Let let's say they do the same thing as last game. They start on this side and they send Thresh down here, and they do the three versus three here against Elise, Riven, and Alistar. They just fucked again because their their level one is once again stronger. The only way it would have been different from last time is Olaf. And so TSM learned from level one. And that was pretty much what decided the early last game. Like, sure, it could have been played out different if they're better overall, but OG's the better experienced team. Even with their new mid laner, he's already an experienced player, high mechanics, Hex Pecky backing him up. So now we're going to see what happens. So they both double jungle. They're double jungling toward, towards their AD and support. Just like I said last time, towards their AD and support, that's where they have the power. That's where Alistar and Thresh can help their teams. Thresh has the option of roaming mid. Alistar has the option of roaming mid. This is where Alistar roams mid. So it should be a key point. Eight lanes pretty even for Bjerg's actually losing because it's a favor towards Ori as the game goes on because he feels like he needs to pressure them. So Bjerg loses a cannon creep here for that. Very smart by Mithy, very smart roam, very good timing. The trade-off here is TSM gets tower faster, but they're not exactly going to get it, so this is still pretty bad for TSM. I think giving Lulu all that she needs, once again, is really important. So, so this is, once again, not giving Birk everything he needs. He's behind 7 CS now. I think that's really important. 
I would rather give my mid laner more stuff than get this tower. Now, even if they get this tower, it's going to eventually die later because uh, they're going to use Ori priority to roam onto other towers, perhaps. Um, I'm going to see what happened there again. Good flash pulled by Mithy. I think Hanser was trying to pull the wave and got punished for it. Hmm. I need to think about this. I mean, it's ve it's very obvious to say that he shouldn't be there, but to understand why he was doing that is also very important. Wait, what was he doing before this? So he's last hitting, he's pushing. Okay, he was going to get a ward. Wait, no, there's already a ward. He's pulling the lane. Okay. Um, so the reason why this is bad is because they're all missing. They can be anywhere. And as you see, they're right here. I think he even sees them on a ward, actually. We saw Mithy roam mid earlier. We saw Mithy walk up through here and go into the jungle. Um, even like paying attention to the minimap is really crucial for top laners. This is something that I needed to work on and that I really focused on. And I guess that's why this happened. So when that when there's that risk there, you just can't pull that. So that's really big. This is really really big for OG because so as getting kills against rise is really important because they want to snowball that lane that's the worst thing that could happen for tsm for, on the, for the gold for the kill to be on and haunter's gonna have to tp back top now now what tsm needs to do is they need to make sure haunter doesn't die on the tower dive because they can dive him if they leave him alone now concert needs a call for this and the team needs to also understand this mutually this is something that i had problems with where I would understand it, but wouldn't kill, call for my team, unless well, I I used I started to, but I would only do it early game, like at these points of the game. So getting wards out for your top laner, and making sure he's fine. So what Hanser has in this lane is slightly behind on EXP, but item advantage. The reason why he's item advantage because he TP back in, so I still hasn't based yet. So even then. Even though the first blood will happen, Hauntzer will still have priority in this lane as long as he has mana. It's very crucial that he doesn't miss a single CS because the Feast will give him mana and HP back. Very good flash by Soas. That was very close. That was very scary. He had I, I don't know if he had a ward there. So getting wards out for Riven is really important too. So you can see that... TSM gave resources to Hauntzer to make sure he can survive, and so I was just playing around the map very very smartly for Riven. Riven's hard to catch. And what OG spected for is since Soaz got first blood, they're giving everything back to their mid and bot lane as soon as possible so they can abuse other lanes. So, so at, they're, they're sacrificing Soaz a little bit, but because he got first blood and because he's playing around it very intelligently, it takes a real amount of experience to do this like or real like talented players or motivated hardworking players to do this so really good by Soaz and really smart about Origin of moving the pressure they're just one step ahead of TSM right now where their TSM's choosing to keep Hanser up which is good but I think they stayed too much because they didn't get the kill and OG's choosing the pressure Lulu and double of one of the two carries Double if is the key carry and haunts are the other key. So that's the bad thing about this comp is that their carries are on opposite sides. So Gragas and Thresh can't be on both sides of the map at the same time. Very good wait by Soaz here. Oh my god. Holy shit. Wow. So it's not that Haunts is really playing terribly mechanically it's more about decision making he is playing overly he plays like he has more than he has basically that's slightly how i played and it's it's a really harsh environment trust me like it's it's extremely harsh it really fucks with your mentality as a player so hopefully he learns from that because that is 
really holy shit OG is just running amok in this game wow this game is super one side too so so now we're going to talk about how the pressure was moved so since they gave back to Hanser and they're setting up for Hanser Hanser died to Soaz and then they set up for Hanser again and Hanser died again and then instead of giving to Soaz they just gave to Lulu they gave to Ori and they gave to Kindred on this side and they got wards in their jungle or was able to pressure the side before them and since they got there before them they were able to make this play because they were just one step ahead in terms of map pressure and for all of TSM's pressure used early game for Hanser to set up Hanser got screwed over because uh, he slightly overplayed now it looks like he massively overplayed to a lot of fans but in my eyes he slightly overplayed and that slight in on against these world-class players it's huge it's very huge it's very mentally taxing so he'll learn from that um it is it is really one side for og now it would take a lot of miracles to come back in this game. Riven's fed. Ori's beating Beard because of map pressure and and uh, both strong mechanics. They're very similar mechanically. Um, so that Mythy Roam that denied Lulu Cannon, Lulu's supposed to win early, but it's very hard if you get map pressure. It's all about map pressure. Tristana, he got rotated on like when kin uh when uh elise oh wow that was really good um elise and alistar roamed from top back to bottom again to give back to kindred and now we see thresh and greg is giving back to double lift from this point of view it seems like giving pressure to double lift will greatly benefit TSM. And this is an example of, uh, wow, actually, no, that was really good by Hanser. This is an example of just like, just like how Hanser overplayed, Niels just overplayed. Now it's up to both teams to be able to punish teams for overplaying, but like slightly overplaying, like against the best players will cause and death but at the same time with that overplay it was okay because even though Niels was kind of staying on tower and being greedy and dying there Soaz is getting a shit ton of farm top and is and Hauntzer is going to TP back up there and if Elise decided to walk top instead Hauntzer could easily die there too so there's lots of different options to think about here but it's all in the moment, it's all on stage, so it's, you know, it's unrealistic to think that way, but those are the potential things to do, and that's what Korean teams would do. Or be close to doing, anyways. Like that's, There's, like, unreal thoughts, and then there's, like, reasonable thoughts. That's that's a super general thing to say. Um, so instead of TPing top, they send double of top. This tower is dead. I don't know why they're sending double of top. I think that they should keep double of bottom so they can keep pressuring bottom. But I think they're swapping because they're less stronger as a team, which is really bad because Lulu gets outscaled. Like, Lulu's outscaling from Ori just does so much more than the rest of the team. Everywhere else is kind of even except Rise outscaled, but Rise is super weak right now because I really game so. TSM's limited in resources because of the mistakes made by Hanser and the mistakes made by level one strategy in terms of roaming. And so this is where we're at right now. Um, so OG's goal right now is they want to choke out TSM. They want to slowly get objectives and everything. They are so far ahead. They easily can win team fights. They have control of the map. They can easily get dragging. They just want to choke out objectives. What OG wants to do is play for top and mid. As you see, you see their resources, Alistar and Elise, playing on the top side of the map. They want top and mid tower. While TSM, since they're the weaker team, they want to trade. But since they're up here, that means that they're trying to defend. 
I disagree with this because I feel like it's a reactionary thing to play towards what OG wants, but this may have been for the better because they're behind. Because if you can't get turrets on this side, then you're just slowly losing. That was a good flash. Probably needed a ward somewhere. Whoa, that was danger close. Um, so now, I said they need to choke them out. Let's kind of speed it up. They're playing towards top and mid. Um, TSM's trying to defend top and mid. I think that's reactionary, and that's the incorrect thing to do, because making plays happens the correct thing to do. That's what OG's doing. Um, it's easier. It's something that C9 was good at. It's easier to make opponents react. C9 was very good at that, even though they were a 7th place NA team, and they did really well at the first week of Worlds. They were very good at making teams react. And that's what OG's doing right now. OG's kind of like a European Cloud9, or, in my opinion, in some kind of ways, except uh, better. Um, hmm. So not much happening. Uh, they they so OG achieved their goal. They got top tower, and um, instead of playing for mid, they play for dragon, which is fine because mid eventually goes down either way. And now they're after dragon. Now they're gonna next. They're gonna push out side waves and play for mid tower, while TSM is gonna be. TSM's not really being too proactive. They're kind of being. Uh, reactionary and this is what this is when Reggie came in as a coach this is what he's talking about so a lot of things that I'm saying about this game Reggie already knows but of course he's busy so he can't always be here to babysit the team but um, just to let you guys know on that Reggie knows an extreme amount about this game and a lot of TSM success comes from Reggie's strategy and a lot of things that I know comes from uh, Reggie's knowledge so there's that um, and it also comes from my experience obviously too like I know a shit ton about the game um, but I did not realize to think about the reactive and strategy part I just knew about the objectives so these are the objectives and being proactive so now that they use the bottom pressure they're now going for middle and TSM's trying to just protect middle too. So instead of going for mid and bot towers and trading, they're just trying to protect. And they're slowly getting choked out, just like I was saying earlier. Ooh. That was a really good hook. That is a very huge hook. Now TSM has map pressure because Soaz is chunked. But Soaz does have TP. Oh, this is why they're forcing stuff, because they have map pressure, because so has chunked. Not the best engage, but it's, it's what they want. Okay, didn't turn out that well, because the engage was not good enough. But it was the right idea. Um, so after that, they things kind of stabilize. TSM's now being proactive for bot tower, because OG doesn't have anything to go for and they're ahead of gold in gold OG stronger right now OG wants to protect their towers and not give them anything because they're ahead they want to just fight them if they if TSM wants to fight OG wants to fight OG's farther ahead so they're gonna comply and when now finally TSM is being proactive after two minutes after defending they realize that we need to go get shit they hit power spikes, they need to go get shit. So this is good by TSM to understand that. And it's good by OG to be like, we don't have anything else to get. We all already got all towers. Let's keep our towers up. And if they want to fight, because we're stronger from getting the gold from towers, we want to fight. And this is where the test of mechanical play and positioning comes into hand. So... OG repels the initial aggression. Now TSM's kind of like going back and forth. You know in basketball when you juke people, that's what TSM's right doing right now. Instead of it's it's all about tempo and, you know, acceleration. You know, in sports how they accelerate, different pace, tip for tempo. Instead of TSM hard pushing this, they know that OG is trying to defend it. 
So they're trying to like, you know, give, give space, you know, give elbow space for themselves. Once they kind of ease up here, they want to go in for that. So that's what they're taking the risk for. But if OG keeps this up, the, this is another thing, another factor. Yeah, that's right. There's a lot of things in this game to think about. Top wave is pushing towards them. The moment this wave hits, TSM's going to have a window to get this. And OG's going to have an opportunity to pick up farm top and TP bot at the same time because they have two TPs. Now, on top of this, Power of Evil has priority middle because of everything that's happened. And Orianna starts to win now, level 11. Ori is much stronger than Lulu at this point, in my opinion, especially with two kills. Ori can push out Lulu and get top for free, while TSM has no choice but to either back and go top or hide bottom and look for priority play here. That's the only things they can do. Yep, that's right. There's more than one thing to think about, guys. It's not just that. Just that. Um, so now we're we're seeing them trying to play for it. They're just using throwing out double if this bait. Um, OG, they eased up, eased up on here, so that means that TSM can go for the spot tower. So they have no idea where Kindred is. Now, they're just sending Kindred to go and defend top. They're going to send Kindred to defend top, and they're going to send Elise and Alistar to come defend bottom. So Soaz still needs to be safe because they're we're all mi like TSM's missing. Soaz did not die here. Very good by Soaz. But you can see what I was saying when they eased up here. And Soaz kind of got complacent here and got chunked really hard. But because of this, they learned information of where TSM really is. That TSM slowly easing into the bot tower. They will gain information, get all the farm top, still have priority middle, get a good buy timer. And then they will repressure the map really hard once again. OG is just a step ahead. And TSM, um, this is what makes pro teams pro teams, is the ability to even do stuff like this. Other, or you can just slowly lose, you know. But they, they are slowly losing, just not as slow as it could be. So Kendra gets a shit ton of farm top. Um... That could have potentially been a kill on Soaz. It's really unfortunate because these two times that Soaz played really well, it was also a very, very close thing. Like, if Soaz died here, it could have been a completely different story for TSM. But at the same time, it just seems that even even if he did die, TSM is probably still a step ahead. But because he didn't die, they're going to be even more a step behind. So now resetting, looking at the map again. They have a big wave building top. They need to support Neils to push it all the way in. If they don't, then they want to go somewhere on the other side of the map. We don't see Dragon Timer here, but that's also really important. That's another thing to think about. Nope, not much to look at right here. This dragon's coming up soon, probably. They give enough vision for Kindred to farm top. Kindred should probably rotate. Otherwise, risk dying. Maybe he's doing that because of uh, dragons coming up, so they know that it, they won't gank him when dragons coming up. But T TSM doesn't need to make a play. Whoa. Yeah. That, you know, nothing I say will explain that better than you guys already rewatching it. So, level 9 Rise, level 11 Riven. Not, not much you can do to win that mechanically. Just don't fight them. Wait for your team. That's something that I do too. I fuck up a lot too. Slightly overextending. You give them an inch, they'll take a mile. That's how it is for pro games. Depending on the players. Um, so, so after that, 
So as is just playing phenomenally this game. Uh, I just I just have to commend him once again. So as is just playing so well. He's got he's thwarted all of TSM's efforts early game and has allowed uh, allowed uh, his team to be have so much more pressure from Elise and at least an Alistar, like, they give the minimum amount to Soaz, and he did his very best with it. And then they they were allowed to give back to Ori and Kindred. That's why Ori's so far ahead, and that's why Kindred isn't behind. Um, I don't know how this works out for Double if how he got so much more farm. I just assume he's either taking from Hauntzer, or he's just last hitting better. I don't think that's the case, because Niels is a very high mechanical player, too, and plays the game a shit ton, so I don't think it's that. I don't understand that well, so that's where my expertise falls short. You would have to ask the 80s themselves to review this side and understand why they lose CS, but I know why Hauntzer lost CS. I, that's, that's all I can tell you from my expertise. Very good flash. Whoa. All right, that was a one for one. I don't know if that was worth it or not because... Wow, that bomb damage. Um, so that was probably not worth it because Alistar used flash pull for that, but he just followed up and then Kindred used flash too. So that was definitely not worth it. They're just uh Surprisingly enough, TSM's only three K behind. Even with all this bad stuff happening. It's very, very uh tolerant. To taking abuse here. Wow. So uh, TSM's kind of coming back here. I think it's a lot of misplay on OG's part because I think they feel like they're super far ahead. But in it becomes more of a crazy mechanical fest of like who's just more fed. And as we see, OG wins out a little bit here because they're more fed. So OG's still ahead, even if they go even, like they still have Ori to scale. Um, Riven's still fed. Riven's have been a key player of this game. If I had to give MVP to anyone this game, like right now, I think Soaz has had the hardest job. While after that, I think Amazing and Mithy have been giving a lot of priority in the right places. While while uh, Kissing and Sivinskirin have been giving the right party in the places also, it's just the rewards that they got for it was a lot less. And that all that all falls upon how your laners play. So this is a scenario where Soaz has, I hate to say it, he out, <laughs> like he just, he's just playing, like not that he's playing extremely well, it's more about like he just outclasses Onser here. And the experience shows the play shows very, very phenomenal by Soaz here. And I can understand that because I played this game top lane. Like, like to think of the way he did, I would have to copy his mindset and be able to do the same thing he does. And I would have to understand the game as much as he does. And that's why it's really commendable. Um, so anyways, moving on. Let's see. Um, so TSM still slightly behind, or five, now they're 4k behind. So that little bit here, even though it looked like OG messed up a little bit, they came out ahead, so that was good for them. Yeah, that's, that's Riven, when he should get ahead. Once he gets that Maul, though, man. This is a result of Soaz's playing early game well, and this is a result of Haunter very slightly miss overextending, and now he's just slightly overextending every time, and he's not adapting. It's very hard to adapt on stage, by the way. It is very hard, so I'm I'm hoping that the pressure doesn't get to him, and I hope he learns from this because uh, I understand his pain if by slightly overplaying. Just because he's slightly overplaying, people will view him as someone that's maybe overhyped just because of one game and like I'm I'm hoping that he ignores all the community backlash because I really believe he does have the potential to do it so I hope you guys are watching and that are also Hunter fans I hope you guys fully support him 
Like, trust me, they need every bit of brain cell and support they can get. Love your players if you're fans of them. If not, then then uh, just do what you love, man. Um, anyways, moving on. Let's see, not, something else happened here. So, Hanser was in a rough position there. This is another example of when Flash is down, you're fucked. Alistar Flash pulverizes you, you're fucked. This is, a, like, just from last game, when your Flashes are down, Ilmo Ball carries. If you don't, like, that's why Thresh was good there, you'll get fucked. So, so I was just going to get another kill here. Um, OG is going to win this fight purely because they're way ahead. There's very little they can do wrong. They're going to mechanically play it properly, and if, as long as they do and don't fuck up, they're going to win. These team fight straight out just because they're ahead and because they earned it. To, or they, they played well to this point, so that's why that this is happening. TSM, they have to make some outrageous outplay to come back into this one. So as took a lot of free damage from Trist, but it was at a result of going to get Baron. Wow, very good Grag Assault. I can see why Doublelift jumped in there. He felt the need to make a play, and he went for it. That is, I, I know there are some people making fun of his jumps, but I think that was the, he should not doubt himself. I think that was a very calculated risk to go in for that one, because if he killed, if he killed Ori there, he would have been able to jump out and get more kills. It would have been big plays, and that's what TSMEs need to do. They need to make big plays. If you make fun of him for doing something like that, then you're very ignorant. You don't understand why. <laughs> you just don't understand. Or you just don't like him. That's either way. It's whatever you want. Um, but anyways, I understand why he did that. Uh, let's... So, once again, just like T Double F just tried to make big plays, TSM needs to make big plays to get back into this game. OG has Barry. They're just going to outscale. Oh, wait. They got more kills there. They need to look for stuff. This is looking for stuff. Power of Evil slightly overextended once again. Give him an inch, take a mile. Gotta shut down Ori. Really big for Rise. Rise scaling is really brutal, by the way. Um, I think Riven needs a build. Maul. Soaz is kind of going a greedy build, but it's a very carry-oriented build. And it takes a lot of concentration to be able to pull it off. And so as is confident enough to do that, so he's going to build that. If I was him, if he, like, not if I was him, if you wanted to be safer, finish Maul, finish Maul, maybe build GA, you could build uh, Spirit Visage, maybe he's just going to build that next. So maybe damages right here, actually. Uh, yeah, I'm no Riven expert, don't look at me. So they were trying to make big plays earlier. Now this is the time where they can't really make big plays. They have to somehow outplay OG here because they're te almost 10k gold ahead. Very good combo by Mithy. Lulu, Perseverance, Tolerance, being able to take all that damage. Oh, very good ult by Doublelift, kicking Niels out of there. Doublelift is... Double Lift is hard carrying this game, by the way. Even though they're so far behind, Double Lift is doing a lot for the team right now. Like they, it's not like they gave Double Lift a shit ton of like um, resources too. Like they gave Hanser and Double Lift the same amount of resources. It's just that Double Lift paid out more. If Hanser didn't slightly overextend, Hanser would also be giving out a lot of stuff back to the team. It's just that, like, imagine if Hanser didn't do all that. The dude has five kills when he's been abused so much. Like, if that was me, I'd be, like, own 10 right now. You you guys got to understand that. If that was me right there, this is why I retired, I'd be, like, I don't know, 07. Maybe I'd get, like, one or two kills. But even though Hanser fucked up and slightly overextended, the dude has five and five right now. Think about that. Think about that. Even though he's slightly overextended and so has outplayed, and played extremely well, like Hanser's still in the game. And they gave, were given the same amount of resources top and bottom. So if Hanser learns from that, he would be a monster too, just like Double Lift is right now. I, I, after watching this game, I, I can see why <laughs> like Double's just, wow. I, I never noticed it before, but 
he's he's just playing the game correctly. Um, and you gotta respect that. And then for Bjerg, Bjerg's playing the same as he's always been playing. The reason why he can't hard carry is not because Bjerg's gotten worse. It's because Bjerg, we're not they're not giving resources to Bjerg at the right times. They they balance it between top and bot because that's how the comp works. But they did not give. They treated Bjerg as like a kind of like a diarist, you know, just slightly. And even with the same amount of resources for top and bot, double if is just like, look at this shit, dude. Wow, look at this shit. They're 10k gold behind. They're almost 10k gold behind. Look how low they're getting. Look at this shit. What, what the fuck? I, I haven't even watched this part. He's probably going to kill people. Okay, that that was bad. All right, never mind. I take it back. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> oh God, everything I just said, I went out through the window. <laughs> uh, yeah, there was the potential there, though. You gotta admit that there was the potential. He just he just didn't need to jump in there. He's 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 face palming for that one too. So that that one you can make fun of him for. I'd make fun of him for it too. <laughs> Hunter was just trying to follow up on that, and that's why Hunter died too. Um, so right now, getting back to the serious part of the game, um, OG is just slowly choking them out. They have been being being very volatile, vol while going for the mid lane, and that's also because uh, Dennis is getting a lot of good Greg assaults. You guys see his score. But you don't like a lot of people don't see the 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 effort that he's making to get back into this game. Um, next thing. So getting back to serious note once again, OG. What they need to do is they need to use that mid pressure, and they need to avoid giving double lift kills. Because if double lift gets kills, double lift can carry the game still. And so will Hanser. Hanser will carry the game too if they give Hanser more kills. Because it's Rise and Rise is fucking broken. Once Rise gets Void and GA or or Void and whatever the fuck item he buys, Rise is extremely strong, and they have to rely on Ori to get good ults off. And Ori didn't go Zanya's, so he doesn't have any armor against uh, Trist other than the the ball armor and the shields from Alistar and heals from Alistar. Is not much there. Same for Soaz, they have no armor. They're completely uh, ignoring double lift. They're going to actually probably focus him somehow and then kill the rest of their team really easily. The reason why they have no armor is because double lift's only 83. And this is why, why this is a double lift kind of comp. Three AP is a one AD. And that, that it influences the, the AD damage. A good example is, let's say we wanted to make a Bjergsen kind of comp where we'd pick AD top. 80 jungle, 80 bot, and then just have LeBlanc. That's the kind of comp that that's the kind of comp that we're talking about here. That's the kind of style. Um, that's what whether they realize it or not, that's what they're focusing on. And what OG is focusing on is their overall are more balanced. And they get they gave resources to all of their laners pretty equally. Um, surprisingly enough, they gave less than Neils, slightly less the Neils than. They did to so as and mid. So if there was a number scale, they'd probably like, uh, let's see, like 40% so as, 40%, or actually 30% so as, 40% power of evil, and then like, I don't know, 25, 30% to deals, and whatever's left over goes to so as and power of evil. That's the kind of pressure OG was doing this game. And it worked out really well for them. They were one step ahead, they played it really well. And I'm just rambling at this point, so let's get on to the point. OG's gonna siege top. They have Baron buff, they just need to siege it slowly. Period guaranteed to siege. This is where the Kindred pick is kind of bad, because Kindred can't siege that well. Uh, so I was ulted a bit too early, but it's not bad, because Power of Evil gets a good ult. Good Lantern by Cussing. They don't have much killing pressure yet other than double so they're just playing around double if this is the lulu tristana power they were able to push out because of the range of tristana holy shit they don't have any armor at all this is why double's doing so much because once again 3ap 1ad 
this is a Lulu effect. Lulu late game scaling is very, very strong. The double if is able to do this not only because he was given some the same amount of resources as Hauntzer, but because it's Lulu. And Beard was getting the Dyer's treatment, but he gives back to his team by giving to double if by making double if carry. And he was able to save Hauntzer too. So Beard really doing his job here, really doing like what he can with the resources given. Um, I want to say this is kind of a throw by OG because Soaz went back in there because they felt like they were strong and Kassin got a really good hook there. Like, wow. They are playing this really well. Like, I'm really excited for what this team is going to bring. They were able to... I, I think it's like complacency by Origin too, though, because Origin was, I don't know, both teams are just, like the level of play, it just makes me happy to see this kind of level of play. It isn't like the, the Clown Fiesta like it was for the LGG first game. This is actually like a really good game to watch, um, even though uh, TSM did lose this. Spoilers. <laughs> um, I'm actually enjoying this game much more than the first uh, the first series against LGG. So, what TSM needs to do is still play off of Double Lift. Double Lift needs to not jump in and do that crazy shit. What OG needs to do is play off of Alistar flank, Riven flank, and then Ori follow up and at least follow up while Kindred is like, <laughs> I don't know, Kindred is kind of doesn't do much here. In my opinion, it's just to take away a jungle pick, I guess. I don't know. Oh, wow. Nice. That was really good by Soas. Playing the map, even though TSM stronger, they have one big threat, and that's double F. So if you play around that, because Origin's more evened out, that's why uh, uh, Riven... They send Riven to split push because Riven's so fucking strong, and Hotzer can't really deal with him because no armor. No items. This is the lead that Origins build. Instead of grouping up, Origins playing the game properly by not grouping up and splitting properly, and then they're going to group here at the right time. This is really scary for them. That's why they're not going in here. Oh, okay, that's the end of the game. Amazing, amazing uh, engage by uh, Mithy there. Mithy hard carried that, and Power of Evil followed up on top of Mithy. OG, like, I don't know, both these teams are just playing, like, besides the mess-ups by TSM, like, this is, this is, like, so fun to watch. Oh, that hook. They still got Hauntzer, but Hauntzer is a lot less farmed than uh, Double, so now they have no more threats, so now OG's gonna win the game here. Wow. This game could have actually either went either way. That that flash pulverize from Alistar was like holy shit. That's that's world class, man. I I have to give best like most valuable players to Soaz and Mithy this game. And all of Origin, you can just see they just support the team so nicely. Like you can tell that they play around each other's strengths and weaknesses so nicely. And it's really, really fun to watch. Um, I really want to see some games with these guys against uh, Korean and Chinese games once again. I'm really excited and looking forward to it. Like, it's just it's just so exciting to watch, dude. I I, I really want to see what happens. Um, anyways, uh, this was my review for the TSM OG series. I know I didn't really review the first game because that was kind of decided there and then. Um, if you guys have any questions and if you actually watch the video, please feel free to leave questions in the comments below and try to get it upvoted so I can see it. I don't live in the comments section. Um, you can see that these guys had a, had a lot of fun. Like even after a loss like this, you can see like a bit of grins on their faces, like OG super happy and TSM. I'm really excited for what TSM is going to do. And I'm really excited for how Origin will do with Power of Evil. So I'm I'm very pleasantly surprised by this game. Thank you for watching this uh, little VOD review. And I hope you guys have a good day. Peace.